Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today's question is, can I analyze the case of Lori Phillips? Just a reminder, I'm not diagnosing anybody in this video, only speculating about what could be happening in a situation like this. If you enjoy this video, please like it, subscribe to my channel, and consider supporting me on Patreon. I'll put the link to Patreon in the description for this video. First, I'll look at the background of this case, move to the timeline of the incident, then offer my analysis. Lori Ann Phillips was born on January 19, 1970, and lived in the state of Wisconsin. In August of 2016, she started dating a man named Mark Phillips. The couple married in December of 2018. They lived in a house on the 5400 block of County Road West in Holman, Wisconsin. This is about three hours west of Milwaukee. Now moving to the timeline of the incident. On Saturday, February 23, 2019, at about 6.29 a.m., Lori Phillips called 911 and reported that she had found her 48-year-old husband, Mark, in a snowbank next to their house. When the first officer arrived on the scene, he pulled into the driveway and noticed that Lori was kneeling over Mark's body, which was lying face down on the east side of the driveway. There was a pair of wraparound-style sunglasses in the driveway about 15 feet south of where Mark was located. Footprints could be seen in the snow. It was later learned that the footprints belonged to Lori. The footprints indicated that she had walked from the house west toward the corner of the garage, then south to Mark's location. She then appeared to return to the house before once again walking to Mark's location. There were no other footprints, and there were no tire tracks. The police officer checked on Mark. He was extremely cold to the touch, and his fingers were blue. Mark had what appeared to be blood coming from his nostrils. It was clear that Mark was dead. Here's what the police found during their investigation. Lori made a number of statements to the police. Some of them were of a rambling nature consistent with intense emotions. Here is a summary of what Lori communicated to various police officers. On the night before, which was Friday, February 22, 2019, Lori and Mark went to dinner at a bar and grill with two friends at 4.15 p.m. They were in Lori's 2019 Dodge Ram pickup truck. After dinner, they went to a place called the Dive Bar. My understanding is that the Dive Bar is actually the name of the bar. It may or may not actually be a dive bar. Regardless of the quality of the bar, alcohol was consumed during this night out. At one point, when Lori and Mark briefly went to another bar, Mark became jealous. He came to believe that another man had come to the bar to see Lori. When they were back at the dive bar, Mark physically attacked Lori in her Dodge Ram by placing her in a chokehold. After a while, Mark seemed to calm down, but then on their way home, he resumed talking about the other man and became angry again. The couple argued all the way home. They arrived at about 11 p.m. Lori told Mark that she was going to leave in her Dodge pickup truck and stay at a hotel for the night. Lori did not enter the house. She remained in the truck. Mark indicated that he wanted to retrieve some of his belongings from the pickup truck prior to Lori's departure. He went to the passenger side of the vehicle and then walked around the front of the truck toward the driver's side door. Mark had an angry look in his eyes, and Lori was fearful. At this moment, Lori suddenly drove away from the residence with the passenger side door still open. When she turned right onto the road at the end of the driveway, this caused the door to close. Lori drove for about two blocks and stopped. She wanted to make sure that Mark was not following her. Lori then drove to a hotel and unsuccessfully attempted to get a room. She went to another hotel, but she had booked the room for the wrong night. Lori parked behind a supermarket and slept in her pickup truck. She returned to her residence sometime around 1.30 to 2 a.m., now on Saturday, February 23. On her way home, she deactivated the security system so Mark would not be awakened when her arrival tripped the motion sensors. Lori pulled into the driveway, exited her truck, and entered the house. She noticed that a pair of Mark's shoes were by the door and assumed that he was sleeping in the master bedroom. She thought it was unusual that the door was unlocked and there was a light on. After sleeping on the couch for a little while, she became uncomfortable and decided to sleep in an upstairs bedroom. 
not the master bedroom where she believed Mark was. Lori woke up at about 6 a.m. and walked into the master bedroom. She was expecting to receive an apology from Mark, but her apology would never arrive. Mark was not there. Lori walked outside toward the garage to see if Mark's vehicle was there. As she was walking, she saw Mark out of the corner of her eye in a snowbank. She walked to him, then to the house to get her cell phone before walking back to where Mark was. At this point, Lori called 911. An autopsy was performed on Mark's body. He died from multiple blunt force injuries, consistent with being run over by a motor vehicle. The police examined Lori's Dodge Ram and found fibers matching Mark's jeans. The police were able to retrieve video surveillance, which confirmed that Lori and Mark were together at the dive bar from about 5.30 p.m. to about 10 p.m. There was also video of Lori arriving at the supermarket at 11.56 p.m. on February 22 and leaving at 1.42 a.m. on February 23. The video matched the story that Lori had supplied to the police. Through the course of the investigation, the police came to believe that Lori ran Mark over with her pickup truck and left him to die. In June of 2020, Lori was charged with second-degree reckless homicide. On November 6, 2023, her trial started. On November 10, Lori Phillips was found not guilty. Now moving to my analysis. Lori Phillips was acquitted. She can never be tried again in connection with the death of her husband, Mark. Many people believe that Lori was not guilty in reality, and the jury came back with the correct verdict. The state, of course, probably feels differently, considering how they took the case to trial. This brings me to the question, was Lori guilty of reckless homicide in reality? Let's take a look at the evidence both for and against the idea that Lori was guilty, starting with the inculpatory factors. Lori repeatedly suggested that she did not strike and kill Mark with her vehicle, but this is impossible to believe. Mark's injuries were consistent with being run over by a motor vehicle, and fibers matching his jeans were found under Lori's Dodge Ram. Even if there was a non-fatal explanation for how the fibers ended up there, only a vehicle in Mark's driveway could have struck him. The location of Mark's body was inconsistent with the idea that he was struck on the main road. His body could not have traveled that far. In the movies, people are struck by vehicles and they fly thousands of feet, but it doesn't work that way in reality. Lori armed the camera system at 11.08 p.m., she did not disengage it until just before she arrived home a few hours later. No other vehicle was detected in the driveway during that time. The only window of time when another vehicle could have been in the driveway was from when Lori disarmed the system until she arrived home. But this gap was only a few minutes. Given the likelihood that Lori's Dodge Ram was the vehicle that killed Mark, Lori must have known that she struck him. A person operating a pickup truck would definitely notice running over a man. Not only would there be a loud sound, but vibration could be felt through the steering wheel and the seat. Not long before Mark's death, he had been violent. It sounds as though this was the most severe episode of violence in the history of the couple's relationship. Lori may have been angry at Mark. This gave Lori a motive to strike Mark with her vehicle. After Lori drove away from her house, she checked the camera system a few times from her phone. This makes it seem as though she was checking to see if Mark was dead. She sent odd text messages when she was away, as if she was trying to create a record of her activity. If Lori was truly afraid of Mark to such an extent that she drove away from her house suddenly, why did she return just a few hours later? Upon her return, how did Lori fail to see Mark's body lying in the snowbank? Lori may have been intoxicated because she had been out drinking, if this contributed to her running Mark over, it is not a defense. Moving to the exculpatory factors, Mark had a history of heavy drinking and harmful behavior toward Lori. This included violence. During one incident, he broke through a door after Lori locked him out. When Lori and Mark were out drinking, a bartender had to intervene because of the way Mark was speaking to Lori. Another friend was concerned for Lori's safety. According to Lori, Mark placed her in a chokehold when they were in her pickup truck at the dive bar. It sounds as though Mark had never been as violent as he was on the night he died. His behavior was a drastic departure 
from even his most violent prior actions. This could have left Lori stunned and disoriented. Maybe she had difficulty thinking clearly due to Mark's behavior and therefore did not realize she ran him over. After Lori departed from the house, she used her phone to search terms including hotels near me and physical abuse, although this could also be interpreted as Lori trying to set up her story. Lori may have been checking the cameras from her phone because she was afraid of Mark. She wanted to know what he was doing. As far as the plausibility of the narrative that Lori did not feel the truck running over Mark, the truck that Lori was driving was new. Maybe she wasn't used to how it felt when driving. It is also possible that Lori realized that she struck Mark, but she didn't think he was dead. Almost as if he kind of bounced off of the side of the truck, Lori didn't think that she actually ran him over. Lori appeared to have an intense emotional reaction to discovering Mark's body, as if she was surprised and upset. This is evident in three different areas. The video surveillance captured at the house, the audio recording from the 911 call, and the statements of the police officers who Lori spoke to. In addition, the officers said that Lori was physically shaking. Even if Lori Phillips knew that she ran over and killed Mark, it's possible that she was justified because he was being aggressive. This may have been a case of self-defense. When considering all the evidence, do I think that Lori was guilty of reckless homicide? No. In my opinion, she was not guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. The jury made the right decision. The difficulty with this case is how much of the evidence can be interpreted in multiple ways. For example, did Lori check the cameras to see if Mark was dead or because she was afraid? Did she search hotels to set up her defense or because she wanted to get away from Mark? I believe that Lori did run over and kill Mark, but it could have been unintentional or done in self-defense. There is not enough evidence of intent or recklessness for Lori to be convicted of a crime. What do I think happened in this case? This is just a theory, my opinion. Mark Phillips was a fun-loving romantic partner when he was sober, but when he was intoxicated, he was angry and aggressive. His behavior the night before his death was shockingly violent it caused Lori to suddenly accelerate away from her house in an effort to escape. During this process, she ran over and killed Mark. The homicide itself was not a crime because Mark was being aggressive and threatening. Lori was aware that she struck him, but she was not sure if she killed him. The difficulty for Lori was that she had consumed alcohol. She didn't want to be caught in a state of intoxication because there would have been criminal consequences she delayed the discovery of Mark's body in order to buy time. Lori was able to display intense emotions because she was genuinely upset that Mark had died. During the trial, the prosecutor was not even close to being effective. The case was supposed to be about Lori running over Mark, but it transformed into the prosecutor running over himself. His cross-examination of Lori was confusing, and his closing arguments were unconvincing. Fortunately for Lori, the prosecutor's skill as an attorney was equal to her skill as a driver. Now moving to my final thoughts. Mark Phillips had the kind of temperament which blew hot and cold. This placed his relationship with Lori on thin ice. It was clear that his occasional acts of violence represented the tip of the iceberg, and he had ice in his veins. When Mark's aggressiveness eventually snowballed, Lori gave him the cold shoulder in response, Mark tried to snow her under, but she hit him like a blizzard and left him out in the cold. The state wanted to put Lori on ice, but they had a snowball's chance in hell. The jury offered a frosty reception, and Lori came out looking as pure as the driven snow. Those are my thoughts in the case of Lori Phillips. Please put any opinions and thoughts in the comment section. They always generate an interesting dialogue. As always, I hope you found my analysis of this topic to be informative. Thanks for watching.